So listen, no, you're not seeing things. Thanos is indeed getting buffed, going from eight power to 11 power. And this is one of six balance changes that got announced today with the latest patch notes here from uh, Marvel Snap. And I prepared some nice graphics so we can run through all the balance changes. And then we'll hop back into these patch notes to discuss some of the other uh, small bug fixes, text updates, and so on. But let's let's jump right into the balance changes because I think those are the most important. And indeed, Thanos gained plus three power, which I have to say, pretty surprised by because there's a lot of great Thanos decks. In fact, some of the best decks in the game right now are actually Thanos lists because it turns out the stones are really great enablers for a variety of strategies going wide and buffing them with Kazars and Blue Marvels or using them with Lockjaws to cheap big stuff into play because they have great on reveal effects and high utility effects as well. They just make great building blocks for a deck. And Thanos is definitely secondary as a card. It doesn't often feel very rewarding to play Thanos in those decks. You usually have something better to do on turn six. Occasionally when he lines up with the Power Stone buff and he goes up to plus 18 power, he can be worth it. But now Thanos is going to be 11 power by default. And of course, with the Power Stone buff that gives him plus 10, he will jump up to 21 power, which is kind of cool that he's a little bigger than Infinite at that stage. It does feel like he's... He's deserving of uh, big power, high power status as Thanos, of course, one of the most, if not the most iconic comic book villains. And uh, the dev team here did leave a comment in regards to this change. They said, we think Thanos is one of the coolest cards and we're a bit sad that he himself isn't played often, referencing this individual part of it, not the stones. Most Thanos decks focus primarily on making good use of the stones, but we wanna make sure the Mad Titan himself has enough power to play. And uh, yeah, I, I still don't really think uh, this buff will materially change that all that much. Frankly, there aren't many instances where 18 wasn't big enough. It was more about needing to do other things, be reactive or spread power across multiple locations on the final turn. And sometimes just committing into that single card was the limiter for Thanos and it wasn't really a power consideration. So I don't know that that would have changed things. This might have required some sort of functional change where Thanos had some kind of positive interaction with his stones, where if you play him, all your stones get like plus one or something to, to actually encourage him being played as opposed to just gaining stats. This might've been a simple change, a quick change. I don't think there are gonna be too many scenarios there where it's like, hmm, that 21 power is gonna make a huge difference as opposed to 18 or 11 versus eight, of course, too, even if he's not buffed. Um, you know, he, he's better than uh, Chavez, you know, he, that's fine for a six drop. You know, sometimes you just play one big thing and eight wasn't quite big enough and 11 is. I'm, I'm not saying that won't happen, just that I don't think this was really the way to heavily encourage and emphasize Thanos himself as a part of that. There probably needed to be a bigger functional change to really encourage this card. So yeah, here and there, very occasionally he'll get played more, but you're still gonna see Thanos stacks because they're really good because of the stones. I'm just not gonna get, I'm not convinced you're gonna see that much more Thanos himself. So next up here is a really interesting change. Sandman is going from a 4-1 to a 5-5. Five, five. And uh, of course, a little bit more expensive, but gaining four stats, That I think that feels like a buff. Uh, arguably, one could say he's more expensive, it's a nerf, but you're gaining enough stats there where Sandman himself feels pretty rewarding to play and chunky, whereas in the past, it's pretty hard to play Samba when you give up your entire turn four for only one power. It was often hard to make that back up on final turns uh, by limiting your opponent because you just limited yourself so much in the process. 5-5 five, five definitely feels less limiting. In particular, I think there's a nice sort of symmetry here with a card like Sarah, where your opponent is perhaps playing Sarah on five to set up for a big turn six, and you're playing Sandman on five, and you're actually getting more power than Sarah nowadays. She used to be a 5-5, five, five, but now she's a 5-4. So you might actually be netting an advantage over your opponent while also shutting down their game plan, creating a really nice, perfect and, and sort of symmetrical counter almost to Sarah in a way where they're being played on the same turn. And uh, the dev comment for Sandman reads, many of the strongest decks right now have strategies centered around playing multiple cards on turn six, Sarah, Zabu, Death Wave, etc. Sandman should be a good answer to these decks, but he didn't quite have the sand 
to stand up to them with his previous stat line. Remember, I'm reading this. We're giving him a bit more power to make him more competitive card, but also subsequently bumping up his cost. And uh, I, I do think this makes this a pretty interesting change. It allows you to develop a lot of power earlier in the game. Still set this up for turn six. Now, he's not going to be limiting people on turn five, but that often wasn't the big pop-off turn anyway. It was really six for most of these decks. So uh, a, a good counter now that's not sacrificing quite so much power and i have to say there were already some decks working with sandman there was a handful of like sandman and control decks in the last really week or two popping up getting some significant play so if those have roots that still work nicely with a five cost sandman as i suspect they do then i think this is a card we might actually see fairly often which could shift the meta quite a bit because so many decks do care about that double she hulk turn six the death wave turn six and all these crazy pop-offs that Sandman could, Sandman could reliably shut down. All right, so next up, Darkhawk here, getting a little bit of a nerf, going from 4-0 to 4, uh, excuse me, from 4-1 to 4-0, so losing one power. This feels like a nerf that was probably, you know, really related to his dominance in uh, the pre-nerf Zabu era. Uh, there were some pretty crazy pop-offs with uh, multiple Darkhawks and Mystiques, and then Rockslide coming in there, all of that being discounted uh, by Zabu. Not the Mystique, but, you know, the other four-cost stuff. Uh, and you could do some crazy things. That Darkhawk Zabu deck was dominating uh, pre-Zabu nerf. Darkhawk still gets played a little bit post that. He is still just a good power card, very efficient, very often for uh, for four energy, especially if you do have a Rock Slide to go with him or uh, a Korg on turn one even can make Darkhawk uh, swing above his weight for his mana cost effectively pretty quickly and pretty easily and, and, and really at, at pretty low cost. You like running Korg and Rock Slide anyway sometimes because they have a lot of disruptive utility. Uh, so this is just pulling him down a little bit. I think that's fine. It does feel a little late technically for when he was really powerful, but Zabu kind of already solved that problem. So just keeping a cap here on Dark Hawk feels completely reasonable to me. I, I wasn't like itching for this nerf, but seems fine. The dev comment reads, Dark Hawk is an especially powerful card as we prepared this balance change before the Silver Surfer and Zabu nerfs went live, we didn't want to hit him too hard. However, we definitely felt that knocking off at least one power from him is warranted, and we will continue to monitor his performance. And again, that, that seems totally reasonable to me. So there were three additional buffs announced, and they all just got one comment here. The cards below are rather weak at the moment, so we're giving them a small buff to help them perform a bit better. So Spider Woman here is going to a 5-8 instead of a 5-7. This, this card keeps getting improved in various ways over time. There has to be a point where this becomes good, I think. Because um, it's it's really worth uh, quite a potential power swing right now. Uh, with, with eight as a base and, you know, potentially negative four on the on reveal. You're talking about a 12 power card for five energy, which that's pretty good. I don't know when that's going to get there. Maybe with things like Sandman metas where you need like one or two cards to really pack a punch at the end of the game. Maybe cards like Spider Woman kind of make more sense there. Some on reveal synergies, some debuff stuff. I, I'm still not actually convinced this will get played over more synergistic game plans and setups because this is just kind of a, a one off high power swing sort of thing. But if they keep buffing it, it's eventually going to get there. And, and maybe 5 8 is actually the sweet spot for Spider Woman. It sure seems like a card with a lot of potential. And I think it's especially good early in uh, like collection pools. Uh, I know early on this card can pack uh, a lot of strength into your deck all on its own. So next up is Namor going from four five to four six. I still don't think this card's anywhere close to being good. Uh, this does make him 11 power when he's on his own to contest the location. That's just not enough. There's so many ways to dump power right now. And even though yes, that's technically efficient from a you know cost standpoint, four to 11 is really good. It's the fact that he's really hard to support. There are, of course, ways. There's Mr. Fantastics and Claws and, and ways to put power in a given location here. But they just require so much setup and you got to have things in the right place. And it just doesn't always work out. It's really susceptible to swings. It's so easily removed by like a single Shang-Chi. So I, I don't know that this is the right solution for Namor. These like standalone cards, I think, have to have pretty crazy high power levels to make any sense. And I don't think a one power difference here is enough for Namor. And then finally here we've got Dagger going from a 2-1 to a 2-2. Again, in the scheme of things, one power is not going to make move decks good or suddenly make Dagger some kind of crazy enabler. 
it's fine. It all adds up, you know, small incremental changes over time can eventually hit that critical mass to make decks good, but this isn't it yet for move. Um, this card can get so big anyway. One power feels pretty measly in the scheme of things. I'd have to think, I think you'd have to change the way it scales. Like if it got plus three power, obviously that could be the, the kind of enormous change that really makes this strong, but a, a single extra power on the base just doesn't seem to make a difference here to me. So fine change, completely reasonable. The card could use a buff as could move as an archetype in general, uh, but this just won't be enough. So heading over to the patch notes as I as I teleport to the other side of the screen here, uh, a few other text updates I want to talk about. Yandu is getting a text update to say destroy instead of remove because he does enable things like null and uh, death discount. So this is just more consistent with the way he works. So this is not a functional change, uh, but does clean up that confusion if you had any. Uh, this reads Yandu's text now accurately describes his effects. Please remember the most uh, that most triggered and ongoing effects are not active while a card is still in your deck. So despite the word destroy, Yandu can remove Colossus and Wolverine with impunity. Basically, these have to be uh, on board in Colossus's case or in hand in Wolverine's case. So they, they won't do anything silly, but Yandu apparently will still affect death and uh, null since this is a text only update. Also, uh, some text only updates here as an ongoing effort to improve card and location text. We've adjusted everything that currently says when you play a card to after you play a card. We hope this makes it clear that these abilities trigger once a card has been <clears throat> fully played, including its on reveal effects. None of these are functional changes. So these will all work the same way, just uh, hopefully making it clear in the future. Uh, so also some location updates here. So Car is now going to say after this turn, put a card from each player's hand here because it did have some weird interactions like Wave and Storm, which I guess this is gonna say. Sakaar had a lot of weird interactions with cards like Storm and Wave. Uh, yeah, as a consequence of revealing a card mid-turn, while we're sad to lose the exciting moment of Sakaar revealing, we want to avoid these confusing interactions going forward. We think this design will open up some interesting interaction points in the early game. Yeah, number one, it's, it's better for players to keep track of it sometimes. Um, well, I guess the car is not the discard one, so you could always see that one, but definitely helps the storm and wave problem that came up in a video recently for me, but also now you have like, uh, like, oh man, do I need to play this card? Cause it might get discarded. Like, am I going to take this risk? Uh, you know, depending on which turn it is, that may not be super relevant because things may cost too much, but particularly like if it's turn three and you have a three drop that could maybe be an enabler or set up later, but you want to make sure you get it down. You might be forced to play it uh might be forced to play it to avoid it getting discarded by sakar so adds a little bit of strategy perhaps uh also some text only updates again with after and when on these various locations and oh this is actually kind of a sneaky change the clintar symbiote uh will now be a four cost card instead of a one cost card which matters because before it was really easily removed by things like killmonger you could have like three cards get absorbed up into that symbiote and then get wiped out in a single killmonger electro or whatever this might make it a little bit harder to remove. So also here, if you haven't seen the uh, series drop update, uh, there's a graphic floating around, but here is the final confirmation. We've got Silver Surfer, Null, Darkhawk, and Sentry moving from five to four. And we've got Colson Hill and Her Helicarrier moving from four to three. So frankly, not a lot of great cards there moving to three. Uh, Colson's popped into some lists, I guess, with Devil Dino and such. Uh, Maria Hill too here and there, but probably not the strongest series three cards, but. Uh, definitely making things like uh, Null and Darkhawk a little more accessible can be uh, can be interesting. Unfortunately, it's got nerfed right as it got uh, discounted. <laughs> bigger conversation for a bigger day. Uh, oh, apparently, Series 5 and 4 now have shared protection uh, rotation in the token shop. I don't know exactly what that means, but... I'm sure somebody out there knows. If you if you care about that, I bet you know what that means. <laughs> Added confirmation dialogue with purchasing season pass levels. That's good. Sometimes people are accidentally buying this stuff. That all oh, that's a great quality of life change. And uh, now you can go right to the shop by tapping icons. Some uh, effects updates as well. Onslaught's a little faster on Bar Sinister. Uh, Claw's ability got some cool VFX, it sounds like. Uh, I think we're still waiting on Thanos VFX too. It would be a cool time to have done it, but I guess they're not done. Uh, some notifications, rickety bridge animations, and oh, Mysterio's Illusions will now use your Mysterio's variant. Oh, that's fun. That's a really good change. A lot of people were sad about that one, I know. So also some bug fixes, but a few of these have actual gameplay implications, like Absorbing Man will now be doubled by Wong, Kamertaj, and Odin, something we'd ran into a lot playing like Hazmat uh, Absorbing Man decks. There was a big debate about whether it actually should or not, but now confirmed Absorbing Man will actually double, which I think is arguably uh, a, a logical change based on the f 
text and function of the card, but definitely a feel good change. It feels like it should. So I'm, I'm really happy to see that one. And a lot of the rest of these are more about just like UI stuff and little little game interactions, or little, you know, uh, menu interactions and, and non game impacting sort of things. So uh, I'll have a link down in the description, of course, if you want to read these full patch notes, but I don't think these are going to pop up for you regularly or things you'll ever even notice. So there you go. Those are the patch notes for today. Very curious what you guys think about these card changes in particular. What are you excited to play? Is the Thanos change going to make a big difference? Is Sandman actually going to be insane now? Share all those thoughts in the comments below. Thanks so much as always for watching. And until next time, game on.